Hello, sir. Welcome to the show. It's such a pleasure to have you. Hi, hi, hi. Ah, uh, same here. I mean, always ready to share some knowledge, gyan about travel psychology. So, before we start the topic of travel psychology, could you do us the honor of introducing yourself? All right. So, I'm Mitesh Jain, a uh, chief sports psychologist, chief travel psychologist at Mandeha. Yes, I did had two firms. Uh, one was Rikpa Center, and one was Mandeha. Now we are merging it into one, and there will only be Mandeha where there will be different services coming in. But travel psychology would be the core of it. So that's about me. I have won multiple awards uh, in global health and pharma, and uh, in Dubai for mental health care and innovations. um apart from that i am a full time trainer of sports psychology as well as course landed up i have been training with international national athletes recently i have got registered with the international olympic committee uh, for a year or so yes going great i guess that much information would be fine about could you share a little something more about mandeha all right so mandeha so this term mandeha itself uh, is a story that uh, we dictate uh, so from past 5 years i've been working with around travel psychology and we needed a name for it so we just didn't wanted to say travel psychology we needed a name we needed uh, a brand identity to travel psychology and in that process we searched numerous names tried numerous branding tips of creating creative names and then we came across this Malaga's language, which is in Madagascar, Africa, right? Uh, now, this Malaga's language for travelers, they call it Mandeha, right? So that's one part of it, and uh, then we convert it into Hindi. So Man is mind, Day is body. So mind body is actually psychology, and that's how Mandeha came into existence of travel and psychology, and it just fitted in right there. So. that's mandeha for us um apart from that uh, we are one and only uh, community or company who is applying travel psychology in travel industry as well as in psychology industry so that application varies from an individual traveler to a schools to corporates or to a tourism industry resorts or hotels hospitality so we understand the requirements and what we can do around them uh to you know enhance uh and not just enhance but bring in more sustainability as well uh, so that's mandeha is is travel psychology an emerging field is it a, a new field or has it gained popularity now um i would say it's quite novel uh it's I I won't say it's novel. It was in existence since the planet Earth, since the caveman's era. If you go back there, where uh, cavemans used to travel or move out of their caves in search of food and water, right? That was their only intention to move out of their cave and exploration that they would do. And in that process, for hunting and for gathering purpose and for storing the food, they created multiple tools, which would only help them. to enhance their lifestyles right uh, if i have to say it in the layman term probably in caveman era there would not be a lifestyle right but uh, this was a lifestyle and they were growing one after another and then came a time where now they were like okay now we have done in our field creating a circle which is a tire to and a lot of uh, what we say is the hunting and gathering tools for uh, hunting purpose now came a time where they were like okay how are we going to share this knowledge that we have because Cavemen uh, was a small communities that used to travel. Probably families, two or three families, around ten to fifteen, twenty people. They were living from cave to cave, and because of climate or uh, you know the resources uh, diminishing in certain areas, they used to then travel to a different location. And then they were like, "What if someone comes over here and they don't have this knowledge of all the tools that we have developed?" So they started to draw those things on the wall. Right. so that was the picturing of the whole you know the whole information and once the community came in and then they saw okay okay this is how they did or oh, this is how they light a fire and they tried and they applied themselves so that is an existence of travel psychology they traveled with intention they fulfilled them 
they gathered information they have put their information right there they learned something and then they are applying back to improve their lifestyles and share their knowledge mm. coming from there to this present era now we are talking on podcast on video calls you know on internet and all that so that's a whole journey of human lifestyle right? through travel through knowledge now we also want to seek information from moon from mars and from you know hubble telescope to james telescope now where now they want to know and understand different universe altogether uh, this is all information seeking for us as a human we are travelers and uh, as much as information we get we are going to learn and we are going to develop and that's how we have been developing as human and in current concept travel psychology it covers around three elements travel environment and human so as a human if you are traveling from a point to b point right so human is traveling in a different environment so all these three elements are coming so we focus on these three elements then there are different theory therapies models that we have developed to work around different things so travel psychology is nothing but a study and application of how human thoughts feelings and behaviors are influenced by this travel interactions or experiences including their effect on individual and societal well being i so, hope this yes, has formed yes, a picture yes. the application of travel psychology on companies and individuals how can it be applied so uh, on individuals uh, or even in companies we break travel into four parts first uh, that's the base of it one is pre travel then during travel post travel right and then comes all of this capturing together is after travel what is going to happen right so in pre travel journey uh, it's majorly about gathering the information or where you want to go and uh, every individual so let's take a solo individual if you are taking and a whole group which can be a company which can be like 10 individuals right now we are not just focusing on group intention as a whole we are also focusing every person in that group what is their intention to go and travel to that particular location right so our journey starts on pre travel from the intention why are you traveling why manali why goa like uh, why not varanasi or why not somewhere in bengal right mm-hmm. so this are the questions if i am a travel psychologist i can ask but as an individual we don't ask this to ourselves like yaar wo goa wala plan to hamesha ho raha hai lekin hum jayenge kab right so that's usually the context uh, in our era over here uh, keeping this fun aside but uh, so these are this intentions uh, so even if you are planning to go goa let's just when we are talking about it individuals travel to goa with various intentions one of the major intentions that we it might be fun uh, uh, relaxation or de- getting de stress and whatever elements comes under it for that individual but what we have also identified is when an individual say oh i want to just de stress and relax on a goa trip but eventually they went on on a journey and exploration to four different points in goa now is this a relaxation or de stress to physical body or an emotional body or a mental body to you like exploring four different places is exhausting right uh, it's equally having four meals at one point of time so that's the intensity so that's how we are focusing on the pre journey we are focusing on all of these elements what is your itinerary about where are you going to travel whom are you going to meet so there are different intentions and we have come across 25 different intentions which is majorly people travel yeah 25 actually there were around 221 when we started and then we narrowed some of them merged as mm. the meaning remain same so i'll just uh, let you go through those uh, some of it which is already there in the travel tangible tool of the pre journey section i'll just speak about them so first one is sense of independence or uh, making your own decisions right on travel journey then excitement and fun then uh, reward yourself for the hard work that you have done on the job hence you are going to travel uh, to di- directly experience something more Uh, see parts of the world first hand rather than relying on social media reports right so 
ha uh, matlab i have seen uh, what do you say eiffel tower in paris right mm. but i've just seen in pictures but for me that doesn't mean that it exists till i go there and see it first time and feel it first time so that's how this direct experience then uh, to feel connected with your genre uh, with the folks from different cultures or historical periods for example if you are a musician you might want to feel connected to the other musician from other place so mm-hmm. if you are a parent you might want to feel connected to the other parents from a different culture so to imbibe and understand your child culture you know so this is how and people travel but somewhere it's there in the conscious and subconscious level it's on the conscious level it might be excitement fun uh, i would say relaxation this compress these are some of the popular intentions that people travel i'll take you through some more um, to experience natural or human made beauty and have glorious sensory experience hmm. like the word glorious is important so here like uh, mindfulness when we talk about it that's from a meditative perspective but here it's about you going there and experiencing certain things bungee jumping sky diving you know those are glorious sensory experiences you feel your whole body alive you make yourself alive so closely related to the adventure travel then to develop closer relationship with your preferred co-partner or co-traveler right uh, that's one of the intention here we call it honeymoon probably but uh, so this might not just relate to your married partner or girlfriend or boyfriend but also to people closely relate or you want to create a bond with right then to change something about yourself uh, to escape something unpleasant this is the prime reason people travel they want to just escape from something unpleasant but they don't know what or they don't know what to do about it so they'll go on a travel journey for like 7 days or 5 days they come back into the unpleasant situation again so that unpleasantness has not changed for just 5 days you were there where unpleasantness was not there and when you came back you came back into the same negative sense of experience the so travel psychology helps to clear those unpleasant feelings and when you come back you should not feel that unpleasant feelings in the same you know daily lifestyle Is that so that's the, the solution that the reason that uh, why when people come back from traveling they feel lethargic and then unpleasant yeah feelings. because they are like are not even come back from travel let's assume right. last day or second last day of travel right right yaar fir se wahi routine mein jana hai wahi mm-hmm. boss wahi 9 to 5 job or a- any random thought right like this is the reason this is the intention why they have traveled but they are missing out this intention hmm. so we as travel psychologists we identify ki yaar tum har journey mein travel psychology apply mat karo but at least one journey probably minimum 4 days if you can go go apply yourself because that's that's what we say precaution is better than cure right mm. so this mm. might give you something that eventually you don't have to work harder into doing certain courses or train yourself later in certain skill sets to develop you can develop there right into travel right so there is two way to learn in life one is reading book you can keep on reading then knowledge will come the second is to have experiences right. right now travel is full of those experiences matlab har kisi ne dikha vasco da gama se leke i have gone till caveman to now in prison without travel we have seen that in pandemic nothing moves and you would be more starstruck right so moving on from all of this particular phase to another intentions where people want to relate themselves to history and their place in it now history is something uh, teaches us a lot of elements so if we understand the history not just ours but our probably generations or our culture or our religion or the country that we are living in all the legendary you know warriors and all so we got a lot to learn and apply so that's another part because if we are traveling let's say uh, rajasthan or uh, north delhi or all that there is a rich history and not just every indian part is but here we say about the warriors the forts the palaces it's rich in history museums are rich in history right so there is a lot to learn then now uh, one of the interesting one is to see if another culture is better fit for you than your own right. so you want to feel like you fit in 
right we all do want to and nowadays in modern terminologies we say whether you are a job fit person now job fit person koi nahi hota yaar matlab probably if you ask any individual bhai tujhe job karna hai ya business karna hai or you want to do what you love no one is going to say i won't say no one there would be a lot of individuals who would say they want to do job but then majority would fall under the another tangent where they want to just feel themselves right they want to just create their own cultures on the work that they have been doing so a lot of companies are also working to incorporate this system and uh, pandemic has somewhat helped them to pause and restart into getting uh, you know in this zone um, i'm just relating it with the corporates with right. individuals and travel psychology but majorly it's why people travel and why they want to settle in a different environment on era for example again i would say uh, you go to have you been to himachal pradesh or some mountains yeah right and you might have felt wow yaar kya lifestyle hai yahan par to matlab mm-hmm. i can live my life but mm-hmm. probably after four days if you are living alone on a solo trip you are like mm-hmm. nahi this is done probably that normal life is something that i will praise more often because i cannot live here forever No. there are very less individual who can live there forever in that particular environment so that's the cultural fit uh, only some individuals can get and find their culture fit it's a process it's a longer process it's not ki yaar uh, if you go on uh, to buy a furniture and you will find your fit of furniture in the first place you will try multiple furnitures and same way you will try multiple cultures and that's when you will understand probably if i'm relating myself to a different culture i get a better understanding of my own culture that i was in and then you feel wow okay i never you know appraised or never praised my own culture and always focused on something else or re- try to relate rather than i would spend my energy here and try to find of how i can be part of this so so that's to feel different from other people a sense of uniqueness is why people travel right and when that happens and when you come in changed and uh, some of the habits you don't repeat uh, mm-hmm. in your daily lifestyle so your friends might say yaar kya ho gaya theko ek wo travel trip mein kya chala gaya you are changed and uh, they'll make fun of you and which is fine friends do that but that's that's the mark we all want to see as an individual we have changed for something good people have started to identify you because you are starting to apply those learnings on travel journey that's something you have learned when you came back your friends are actually saying bhai tu to badal gaya right so that's that's what people are actually traveling now sense of uniqueness that they want to find hmm. relax and decompress i've talked about that then uh, to gain new perspectives on your home culture and how you are influenced by it so that's how i relate the another culture phenomena again over here to gain confidence in relying on yourself dealing with the unknown and solving right. problems right um yaha pe again solo travel comes in as very important mm-hmm. one um, apart from solo travel a lot of uh, organic uh, travel that you do where you might be a volunteer and you are solving certain problems you are teaching them so all those comes and most of the time this also comes in free so uh, i do remember you asking also about ki only rich can travel no travel is free it's just you have to figure out and find and reach out to those individuals of how it would be free right and it would be free for lifetime as well it's just about reaching out and whether you want to be in that lifestyle right you can create your jobs you can create your business while you are traveling as well huh? so those are the elements then to possess new and novel experiences majority uh, want to fall into place to experience experiment with not being overtly hesitant in making decision now this is the space where we are stuck aisa nahi hai ki hamare paas ideas nahi hai hamare paas decision making and application skills nahi hai basically uh, we don't have the guts to apply to leave something and apply something novel or ideas because we have something called fear of failure so travel helps you to come out of that fear of failure make those decisions while you are on journey 
and we might have often come across this certain plans do change on journey even if there is a nice itinerary so solo travelers usually experience that and this is one of the skill set that you need as a solo traveler to constantly improvise to constantly take those difficult decisions around safety uh, around accommodation around monetizing and economy you know uh, solo travels are usually costly as well because there is no one to share those elements so you are paying for one as an individual but now there is a solution there is hostels now in place so multiple hostels are there so you pay for only certain part of it so this is where um, making decisions usually break for solo then uh, comes so certain intensity can, uh, help with the creativity as well yes definitely creativity confidence there are around as i said there are around 90 plus parameters travel directly affect them directly um, a lot of it is happening in your subconscious level hence you are not aware about it right um, there's something called embodied learning embodied cognition now embodied meant is nothing but uh, something that you have learned in your lifetime till now like probably at the age of 3 you might have learned something but that doesn't mean you don't have the skill now it's just you have not polished the skill or it's not in awareness but once you do that thing it will automatically you will do better than average individuals you know that is embodiment and travel is is full of those embodied learnings which brings out your skills which were already in you but it's just bringing you in awareness now imagine if you have a skill of persuasion mm-hmm. right and tum sales or marketing now now persuasiveness is something that they need but if i would say yaar mere paas nahi hai persuasiveness i am a very humble guy main nahi push kar sakta sales marketing but one of those journey when you are being persuasive and then you understand on travel journey wow i can do this and then you when you are in aware that ha yaar main kar sakta hu and then you go out there and you do it in any form that's when it starts to work so that's awareness so travel brings in that awareness that ki bhai tumme hai creativity tumme hai confidence persuasiveness humble and a lot many factors like that. Right. so uh, to bring that out we have created an assessment tool out of travel so once you complete your travel journey you fill in and that brings out those particular awareness up front to you so when you read and when you read at what level it is and then after we understand that at this level it is then there is something called how can you develop it more hmm. right so then we give them tips and tricks that how they can up, keep applying themselves and you know uh, refurbish it so it, um, this is the skill set and learning that we are talking it's not something that once done it would be there for you forever you should always level up you should always keep practicing the same thing again and again and that's when you become really really good so this is a whole tangent of travel that you have to keep doing it you have to keep improving it travel will definitely provide you with ample of solutions hence the next intention is travel will provide some psychological space this is why we are traveling now one of the example that we have mentioned up front to individual i just read it out when you get psychological space your perspective will be broadened and diverse aspects will come into focus to comprehend this think about what it's like to view a scene from close up versus from a wide angle right so when we say out of the box thinking that means that we want to look at the box from outside but a lot many th- time or thing sometimes you just have to stay inside the box because the answer is just inside or another example is uh, when we say oh dig deep dig deep there is a solution just keep digging you will find a solution sometimes the, it's just a surface layer problem you don't have to go deep down that's how that's what psychology has teach right. us right identify kiya surface pe ye problem most of the time every time you don't have to dig deep it's just the intensity when you dig deep right so those are the angles uh, and that's again one of the reason people feel hesitant to tick mark this particular intention but somewhere um as we are psychologists and even psychometrics is one of the skill at on board in mandeha so we have created certain parameters in this intentions which directly or indirectly says us that ha huh, this is about psychology space which comes down to the next one is to escape from current hurdles in life hmm. 
right now what this current hurdles can be multiple things uh, everyone has a problem and we keep on finding those solutions and keep on working hard towards solving it so here we have also my mention that if you can mention what kind of hurdle it is we might help you to you know uh, churn your itinerary better to focus towards that hurdles and solve it into the journey right irrespective of the days but we do need at least minimum 7 days ka journey for something big to happen right um if i would say nahi ek din ka journey or micro adventure is what we say a uh, one day or a one night journey um uh, now yes there might be things that you might you know learn or experience from micro adventure but a seven day journey is anyways a good space and time you need to settle in with a lot of things that's happening around you you might be vulnerable to emotions in those journey so you, know, you have you need your own self sweet time to get handled so travel psychology also handles that then last is uh, for getting clarity on personal issues now this is the prime reason people travel the prime reason but and secondary reason where people will tick mark ki ha main personal reason ke wajah se travel kar or i am seeking clarity people would just say oh i am just seeking clarity over certain things so this is a uh, human nature for us that we don't directly want to say this is our problem hmm. we'll just cover around the bush to explain i have mera problem ye hai mera problem there uh to being direct is a difficult task for every individual and we do understand um that so it takes time for them to come towards that part so this when you ask so how do we do it for corporate and individuals after all of this intentions we know their itinerary where they are traveling as well right um and then what is if it's a group then what kind of group intentions they have and individual intentions there after mapping out that then we sometimes not always but sometimes we place those exercises or certain uh, you know experiences on the journey which would directly focus on those particular elements most of the time it's already there in travel as i speak that travel has travel will automatically teach you even if it's a fun journey with your friends or an uh, experiential journey or an industrial visit your college takes you to right so those are more intentional where they want you to learn certain things on journey and there are fun elements involved but this is how travel has always been right. in the space and how we are focusing by bringing it in more awareness right um so the solutions from travel psychology is towards awareness how can you apply those awareness and how can you keep it constant in your lifestyle and develop those into level 1 of communication level 2 of communication level 3 of communication so if there is a communication skill we are talking so those are the stagnant phase and then we will always be there to get into another session or another journey where they want to be part into all right so this was long probably uh, yes but this are the intentions of my people mm-hmm. travel and how we start our sessions and our work around individuals and corporates or groups so if a person is having hostile feelings or negative emotions like anger is isn't mm. it better for them to travel and you know uh, channel those emotions uh, instead of uh, directing them towards their bosses or towards their loved ones if they could just explore yes like uh first thing is to bring that awareness in them ki they want to solve this particular uh, emotions that they have been facing and anger as an emotion is always a choice hmm. right uh, because there are other emotions as well. but then you are choosing anger out of any other emotions is because you feel being overpowered is people would hear you out when you are loud people would hear you out but not always or in most cases probably not they'll just hear you out because they don't want to repel back or they don't want to talk back so yes uh, there have been certain cases where a uh, 45 plus year old man was there on the journey and he was having extreme irritational and anger issues he was probably having problem with everything that was there on the journey if not probably not everything but 
most of the thing uh, he was always complaining about certain things and others and we were like yeah sabke liye yahi hai like this is how equality is um, because everyone has paid same everyone has applied everyone know why they are going and all the details are all given so why are you complaining so then i reached out to him i was like what exactly is happening because there is no one particular complaint from your side so our collaborative company was actually taking the journey and i was on that journey as travel psychologist on certain days not all days so in my free span i just reached out i was just talking with him all daily and what does he do and he was a well to do nice matlab everything is settled he don't have to work hard everything is going really great in his life like yaar ye anger issues mere ko bahut pehle se most probably uh, from the time when i get married that's how he remembered it as like so this anger comes from your marriage it was like no 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 it it's not like that but uh, probably i became more aggressive and when i am more aggressive i tend to work better i was like but then you are aggressive and irritational and almost getting glitches in this journey every now and then it's like because this is not right that is not right i was like what's right for you i mean if this is not right then what else you want uh, apart from whatever is over here then he kept on thinking he kept on thinking like nothing matlab he could not come up with anything that he would want apart from that so then um, i said so what do you do to control this anger you might have gone through a lot of anger management technique because at what position you are in i'm definitely sure you have gone through a lot of this so he's like yeah 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 i've gone but you know that doesn't work much directly but i have my own technique to control anger as like acha matlab kya hoga bhai 1 2 3 hoga deep breathing hoga that's how we say right or probably just move out of the situation right and just breathe yourself out and come back so this is nahi aisa nahi so whenever i get angry uh, i shout out loud plot twist so he shout out loud plot twist and then calmly he says to yourself it's your time now it's your time calm down so it's like jab main aise bolta hu i feel like i have control over everything so maine bola ha i have heard you uh, doing that but then i was like probably it's just because there's something happening and you said that plot twist and all that then i was like wow that's a wonderful technique uh um, and uh, soon after this whole conversation i did not provide any solution or rather he did not provide any problems either then it was all sorted he was not irritational he was more mm-hmm. cooperative and rather he was more fun with that mm-hmm. intention so what did one conversation do catharsis no not probably not catharsis but just he just wanted to be connected or felt that something's happening or something that he wanted to give out loud because of his position hmm. so that was his personality and when he, he got his place and space he was all fun so imagine what should i say as a travel psychologist over here ki kya cheez ne solution diya hai hmm. so it's just the travel and environment as a space that provided him that awareness and everyone with a lot of fun okay. so there are this cases where anger management can not be solved totally but can be controlled and with just asking right questions or probably just talking them through that anger and releasing all that energy is one of the also approach in travel now the only problem here is how would we tell them that dude you have an anger problem so go travel aisa nahi ho sakta but aisa ho sakta hai ki this is this intentional sheet and you are traveling to this particular location so just check out na matlab kya kya intentions hai tere journey pe and uh, once they do that then we understand like what exactly and then we can power it down to that anger later on the journey hmm. so that's how it is and different from a traditional psychology do that improvisation is needed as a human very much yeah so that's that's how it is so during the pre phase of uh, during the phase of pre traveling is mm-hmm. there any psychometric assessment done to determine where should a person travel yes. or what his personality yes. correlates with yeah yes 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 a lot we have our major work has gone around that to identify ki yaar uh so already there are many companies like that uh mm-hmm. you know who ask you to fill certain forms 
I'll I'll speak about few. Uh, one of the kind is uh, you you won't know where you are traveling to, so you just fill their form. You just fill the fee of travel, whatever it is, and a day before they will tell you to either come on the airport or this train station or this bus station, and there would be their tour manager. Uh, he will say you, okay, this is the ticket. This is your seat. Uh, yeah, pay bed job, and that's when you will come to know. Okay, I might be going to this city and this state, right? And after that, when you reach there, then they will take you to hotel room. So that's every bit of it is a surprise for you. And so, how do they know that probably I'm gonna like this particular place that I'm traveling to or location that I'm staying in? So there is this whole form that they churn out with, and they have mapped it out that probably if an individual selects this particular tangent, then okay, this is the location. So that's that's a normal human way. So what we have done is uh, through thoughtful selections. So thoughtful selections of questions which appears. So if you select and response A, then the next question would only be based on those A responses. And in the next question, if you select C, then the next question would be on that particular C. So that's how we churn it out and we select your travel style. And now this travel style is focusing on mind, body, and soul. So what your mind wants, what your body wants to experience, and what your soul wants to feel. Right. Uh, so this is how we churn out travel styles. And there are 10 kind of travel styles that people want to do. Right from an adventure to novelty seeker to a shopper to a briefcase or corporate and to a over the life experience where people just want to do everything. They might also come out of it. So that's one of it. Then there are another few elements. Apart from intentions, travel styles is when we identify, okay, he's much into this particular space and this is his travel intentions. And then few other questions align where we can drop into those locations. Hmm. But as a travel psychologist, uh, choosing a journey for them is not our job. We identified that at a very early part of our research because you as an individual, you might have had something in your head when you were choosing that location. Something that you loved apart from something that's very subjective. And we honor the subjectivity in this particular tool, travel tangible tool, where there is qualitative responses as well, where you'll have to type in certain information that you seek apart from the selections that right, you can do. Right. right. So travel tangible tool is a well-established and only tool which focuses on human aspects of intentions and learnings to and from travel experiences. So now that we are talking about pre, there's something that's there in the post which you will have to fill out. What And that something is about your travel journey that you have experienced and you are filling out. So travel styles gives that clarity we want as a person of uh, how often I'm going to take that similar trip as a person or how Often I'm just going to visit Goa because I am, you know, uh, I'm. this is how I want to praise for my hard work that I've done or I'm de-stressed. So I just go to Goa because it's handy and it's fun and I know that location. So for people who are in Mumbai, Pune, Bangalore or this, Goa is the prime location that they go. And why I talk about Goa is, uh, usually in talks is because people would relate and understand more better uh, so this is how we churn out and then there is a lot more technicalities involved so during the post traveling when they have to fill the form uh, the qualitative uh, mm -hmm. so do you uh, guys interpret the data and then uh, give the results to the client we have did it first manually we used to do for like three right. years uh, because it was under development uh, and in pandemic when we we got a lot of time because travel was stopped for around two years then we automated the whole process so right. there is a whole lms system which automates uh, sas system which automates and now we are moving ahead to get into apps or software where it will be just really handy uh, and beautifications around it that we want to do currently it's more informative we'll make it more more handy more user friendly 
So that's our approach apart from development. So travel tangible tool will be in constant development. Uh, always uh, new elements are going to place in travel industry and taking care of that new things happening like pandemic has happened. So a lot of things have changed of how people perceive travel or for example, I remember after first pandemic, people traveled to Shimla and because Shimla was quite open for tourists and not other locations. It was flooded and it was flooded till the time where I remember one of one of the person that I know, he was also going to Shimla and he was like, he was in car for 12 hours long on that particular traffic route. I think like, that means you just devastated and destroyed a tourist location because if you are seeing 12 hours just in traffic traffic that means there would be around lakh of people going to shimla and shimla is such a small to eat and loving place so there is no space so, and you cannot always go out because there are so many cops out there always regulating the bodies i was like so what did you go and do there there's like nothing we were in hotel room chilling i was like you could have done that at your home space People do travel with different intentions. They just want to move out because they are done sitting at home. Right. But they are not taking the end result that this is not. In turns, when they came back home, they were frustrated. They were already frustrated on the journey while going. So it didn't help. That particular mm-hmm. travel didn't help. Uh, only certain expenses that happened to them. So uh, these are the examples of how people... Uh, traveling uh, and how pandemic has changed the whole mindset to travel and we are keeping that in loop we are also churning and that's more or less everyday work that happens hmm. travel as human tools. beings as human mm-hmm. beings do you think that we are wired to seek out travel yes as I said right from KM and uh, we would always go out there and travel for example uh, if people want to go out and seek themselves is one of the approach as i said even uh, for example family doctors used to say jao or hill station chale jao for seven days and come back you will be all for me that's travel psychology within itself and they are saying because travel is helping the environment change is helping so yes consciously or subconsciously this is one of the motive that we would travel and will always travel to learn, experience, to have fun, create those memories that will not just last, but it will create a personality within yourself. So I would also say that it's more towards you, innate, within or even outside what you are showing. Right. right. So apart from making Goa plans, which is, I would say, lol to all the Goa plans, you have seen it before, right? Like, someone used to know suddenly transformed after venturing out to the world, all their old dreams vanished. They came home all worldly with their stories and newfound carefree attitudes, kind of annoying, I would say really, because people don't like, people want to change, but they don't like the change that is happening. Mm. Because change is difficult phenomena, it's a process. And um, hence we say transformed by the end of the day. So life is different now. They say they have changed. They have finally found themselves. Um, And when people say like, oh, I want to travel and I want to just find myself or I want to get lost in travel and that's how I'll find myself. I hate that phrase. Uh, Finding yourself is so cliched and fluffy with that purpose that it doesn't even mean anything anymore. But the truth is, travel does change things. The person that leaves is rarely the same as one that returns. And that's happening because going out to seek what lies within uh, removes their outside influences that's Mm. churning them. And this outside influences can be from your friends, family, close ones, girlfriend, boyfriend, uh, government telling you to do college, institution, corporates, work, offices. They're telling you to do things which probably you don't want to. And hence, you're traveling, right? Uh, Realizing your paradise doesn't exist, right? Uh, But you may find your cultural fit place somewhere. Uh, Nowadays, you'll see a lot of students are traveling from different states, different cities to learn different 
um, you know, courses or curriculums or careers that they are selecting because they are also finding their cultural fit and hence they are planning to shift city because they feel, oh, this is this is how I want to live. So that's realizing that paradise doesn't exist. A lot of the fundamentals of living would not change, but probably I like this one, hence I'm choosing. Last but not the least, we have always traveled to find perspectives, right? Uh, whether it's inside out or outside in, perspectives is what we see. When we are having a conversation, even with a chaiwala in mountains somewhere, he shares certain perspectives. You feel wow. Mm. Matlab, Definite. Ab gyani ho, ab gyano, gyani ho, matlab, ab chai ke like that. We we all know that chai walas can be a prime minister of some country, but it it is crazy when those perspectives hit your heart. Mm-hmm. When when their own lyrics of songs hit you really hard, where they have written certain songs for their loved ones, and you could feel it. And you're like, yeah. I Bollywood music I was trying to be cool, but this is something that I love. And hence, travel will always remain a core and constant to seek out or to move out or to push yourself to get into. And uh, travel has always been a solution for your life. Speaking in terms of travel psychology, how much impact do you think uh, the pandemic had on mental health? Ah, enormous. Uh, Even for me, it did. uh, uh, Whether as a founder, business owner, or so on and so forth, everything was stuck. And we were like, okay, what's the solution? Okay, when will it open? Okay, 21 days. Okay, okay, 21 days. Okay, 21 days. Okay, 21 days. Okay, 21 days. That way, three months were taken and then travel industry was still paused because no much of travel. Then it went up to six months, then one year, then one and a half year, and then Last April, it happened again, second pandemic stop. Uh, and then this particular month is when the whole travel has actually opened. Yes, we did multiple projects. We did reach out to resorts fund. We did apply travel psychology, but not with an open you know, self in the safest self that we could feel uh, with that particular tangent. But yeah. So personally, yeah, it did affect. And uh, that's one of the information that I want to share that you don't have to hide whether the pandemic has affected you or not. Yes, it has affected. And I'll also um, like to you know pinpoint on certain factors as well. Like for example, children's uh, excessive crying and annoying behaviors has happened from them because they were in house probably house arrest for a very, very long time. I remember in my childhood, if I would not go out every evening, it would just be a trouble. I could not even study or neither play or just figure out what to play at home. So children specifically who were alone children, only children at home, uh, it was really difficult because if you have siblings or cousins living somewhere around in the same apartment or in the apartment beside you, you could still do something. So that was happening. Increased sadness, depression, and worry for children, right? And uh, which could not be identified. Uh, mm-hmm. So you would you you could see your children changing and being more matured. Whether they should be having more fun in that space, right? Um, because I would say like children should have fun, and there should always be a child inside you to do right. those crazy things happening. So difficulties with concentration and attention. A lot has happened because their study system changed. Everything was happening online. A lot of distraction on the screens for them. Um, I've seen, now we have seen like one and a half year, two year handling phone, YouTube and just scrolling. I know one of my cousin uh, doing that. It's interesting to see, but it's also very confusing to see why I'm, what's happening. Because for parents to give them phone is a better solution rather to focus so much because I would come to the adults part as well, how they have been affected. But this is how children are affected. Then uh, changing um, changes or probably avoiding activities that they enjoyed in the past. So a complete drastic change in them that they are not doing things anymore that they used to do before pandemic. And after pandemic, it's completely different. Right? And then unexpected headaches, pain through their bodies, uh, Changes in their eating habits has changed. 
Uh, we have seen children going from normal to obese and then coming back to the same space. But then that is something that has changed. And coming to the adults, uh, irritating and shouting behavior uh, for anyone that we already discussed of how can we overcome that. So that has increased. It was there, but it has increased, which is a terrible uh, news and information that we should have. Change in their sleeping and eating habits. We all know that. We have all gone through the sleeping and eating habits. Right? Uh, emotional outburst. Right? It was there, but it's increased. Fear and anxiety. COVID has created an enormous fear and anxiety. And for some of them, it has lasted. Right, they'll still wear masks. We'll keep on washing with sanitizer, and that's when we say OCD, obsessive compulsive uh, problems. Right, um, so that has increased. Uh, loneliness, social isolation has happened already. Um, previously, for individuals who were already socially isolated and they did not want it to connect, they are more isolated towards it. And living in the bubble has caused a lot of problems for probably athletes. Right, because in wherever competitions they go, they cannot go out and experience the environment or go directly in the competitive arena and feel the whole air and what's happening and what's there. Like that. they'll just be in the room. So that's a bubble that has happened for not just competition or athlete, but any event that is happening out there. There is a bubble created. You will have to stay for previously it was for a week, 14 days you were just in room, and then one or two days event. And after that, again, 14 days, you would be in a bubble, right? So that is crazy. Uh, then uh, financial pressures uh, has increased. Uh, a lot of relaxation has also happened from government. They have helped a lot. But still, uh, we cannot move away from financial pressures. Then big disruption to the mental health care industry and services. Uh, the number of cases were increasing. Uh, the professionals were really less to, so to balance the quality of service everything just churned out and it it brought a different change in the industry where now uh, IITNs and IIMs are the owners of big big firms where psychologists are hired to work for them and that's again another financial pressure comes down to the psychology or psychologist industry where they say, oh, we don't get paid or we have to pay for mm. internships and all that. Yes, these are all living problems. Uh, the only solution if if a psychologist stands up and creates their own company and services and that's when they'll understand the direct relationship and direct problem, right? I mean, creating a balance. Running a business is difficult um, and in industries in India where it's booming and there is a change happening. There is a technology shift. and now. There is Web 3.0, where Metaverse and NFTs and all of this, we are talking. So everything is now shifting more into technology. So how can you bring back human element away from that technology? Like phones have just become a part of our life. Like we cannot be away from our phone. And that's that's how much COVID or pandemic as a whole, not just COVID, the pandemic has affected mental health of people. And not just pandemic, even epidemic affect a lot on mental health you know you remember swine flu era in india right. though it was not huge but yeah. uh, we were all again wearing masks or napkins or if there were no much masks during that time 15 10 15 years ago and wearing masks but in african region it was terrible right lakhs of people died um, so it does bring a lot of change in the whole lifestyle and not just lifestyle the whole system changes and I've seen over here, uh, pun intended, mere pe, I won't name the brand, it was fresh and now it has turned into smart point. The whole branding changed, the whole service also changed and I don't like it anymore. When it was fresh, I loved it. I used to get things that it was there, but now when it's smart point, it's still the same, product still the same, but I don't get what I want. Right. That's that's how much the pandemic has changed things. Like a simple thing that I loved is no more over here. Like pun intended. Right. Yeah. So uh, last been. question I want to ask you: Can you give a brief about sports psychology? Sports for me is something that I have been doing right from my childhood. I used to play starting. I was. I remember two and a half, three, I used to play with my 
elder cousins who were 10 15 and I remember playing cricket and football majorly mostly cricket gali cricket what we used to play and i was already good there they used to know me as good because i was never as the middle man or the middle child who play for both the teams i was always <laughs> considered in one of the teams so that gave me a space that okay and they used to always say yaar tera career na sports mein hoga i mean you should be like that so that was my skill as a child right i love playing but when i joined in school then i played multiple competition i played almost all the sports it was like there's one sports department and i used to play all the sports but my majority was goal keeping keeping with an example from mm-hmm. cricket to football handball um i used to be a goalkeeper and in football i played states in handball i played nationals with that in in my school curriculum then uh, with that after that i joined in psychology i kept on studying so my sports were left behind i was not playing much and i till that time when i joined in bachelors i did not even knew sports psychology exist right matlab i only knew as clinical child or industrial because that's all we were studying when right. in uh, social psychology bhi tha but then i did not knew that social psychology is a different mm-hmm. field awareness in it boom it was not so booming it was just starting and i chose psychology uh, was one of my skill set when one of my professor do you had a nice observation skill and improvisation skill to to kar lega us man that's how i because i did not wanted to do commerce or you know ca mba engineer i was like nahi har koi kar raha hai mujhe wo nahi karna i just want to establish myself as someone else and uh, that's how psychology started for me and i remember in uh, second year bachelors i was there and i was studying multiple theories in social psychology matlab theories hi theories hai uh, and uh, one bandura's theory of social learning theory right so that's really close mm-hmm. to me and in travel psychology also it applies wonderfully i was like na yaar ek din na matlab main bhi mera theory ya the model would be in book and people will study go crazy about it ki yaar kyu ki hai isse ye so that was my irritational level of yaar itna theory kyu karna more or less it's just talking about same thing but more in a very specific way every case is different right so now i understand that but during that time it was all about curriculum and learning with that intention i did not knew that i would be so serious that after about some years five six years i'll come across one of this concept like yaar how this is something i have experienced in the journey i've been traveling a lot extensively um i've changed so much uh, transformed into so much for me i am an aggressive person i still am but now i my aggression is more controlled and uh, it comes out when i want it to be released most often right so that's my awareness and identification i have no shame or doubt on it ki bhai main aggressive banda hu to me hu like i cannot change my core because this aggression has brought me somewhere where i am today right um, and i won't say virat kohli is one of the best example because he is from sport as an industry and hmm. on field he requires that for off field he don't same way on working when i am aggressive i work out that's when my productivity shaw showers not in the session i'm not aggressive in session but when there is multiple other works handling a whole company will have to push you'll have to be aggressive at times shout at some individuals because they are not performing well right so that's a part of life and when i identified that through travel is only that it has become more calmer and calmer over a period but it was a long long journey right and after getting married abhi to thanda ho gaya like <laughs> there's no way i i'm going to become aggressive now right so that's another crazy uh, thing mm-hmm. and then i've also worked uh, in my masters i got opportunity to go to malaysia uh, work with the olympic and elite level athletes over there so that was my first you know uh, i would say first experience working with athlete and sport so imagine a child who was playing cricket somewhere in this childhood never thought yaar matlab elite level olympic level athlete it was already a big thing and then after that we have i worked with multiple uh, private i would say uh, private engineering institute the first rank private engineering institute worked and did psychometric projects with them that was a big deal for me being such a young and i'm still young but young at that 
time and uh, athletes i work with various athletes from various domains various sports um majorly tennis shooting rifle shooting are the forte's but apart from that a lot other sports a group of sports and now my apart from travel psychology my work is around e sports the gaming right we have been doing on computer and phones pubg bgmi on phones and uh, cs go fifa psps that we have been playing now they have all been converted and it's happening in this asian games when there are 12 sports 12 12 games i would say e sports are in asian games and by 2028 it would be in olympics so it has already been discussed in 2019 let's see if 2028 olympics happens but asian games it is happening india is representing their athletes in e sports right there are many organizations playing full time competitive level private competitions and even national level competition international level competition the money is humongous millions of dollars to win right and uh, that's the level of craze the athletes have been playing for 11 to 12 hours straight on screens practicing their reflex the psychology understand if you just started studying psychology there's so much cognition involved there's so much training involved mm-hmm. and my work is more now getting into the uh, traditional sports psychology into e sports and shower and bloom from that Uh, because i love speed sport D- during pandemic only i i used to always game uh, we used to always play you know contra during uh, our old times used to play that right, games right. from there i have played cricket i played fifa fifa i love playing fifa hmm. mm, and uh, cs go counter strike we have played on computer a lot and now we play bgmi uh, i play with my own clan differently and some local e sport athletes as well not so good but that's a time when we interact as a friend if we are not meeting because a lot of people stay in different different mm-hmm. cities as well so most nights we come together on holiday nights or any and then we have fun we shout out loud and so that's how closely i have also gone towards e sports and i mm-hmm. see that wow this is all about application you know psychology you know sports psychology you are already working with travel psychology so the human as an index is what you know and the next thing you should know is about which industry now so it's travel industry okay e sports industry okay this is how a different okay it requires a lot of time lot of energy to work in e sports as well because it's a complete ball game different different ball game the physicality element is just this and this this is all you need in e sports right you don't need legs hmm this is all you need eye hand coordination reflex and you will hold your phone here while you are playing this is how hmm. it happens so close imagine those reflex that they need just to win the whole championship and it's crazy um, the attention span that they need just focus on one particular element that's happening but it's not one there are 100 elements that's happening right. at one particular time on screen and they are doing so the level of cognition intensity is high and that's another work that we have been working and apart from that sports psychology course and my master class is live i do that every alternate weeks master class the must so to get into master class you can directly join in but doing workshop would be better uh, it's kind of cheap as well i guess 600 rupees or so um or now it it is more cheaper Uh, at this particular time where people uh, during april and may do all this course so it's way more cheap now uh, you can join in that workshop understand just the basic it's probably 300 400 rupees now and uh, understand basics of sports psychology and how in different age groups you are going to apply right from childhood to adult to disabled athlete to intellectual disabled athlete um, olympic level athletes so sports psychology varies on this application about that then mental skills training how you going to do psychological skills training how you going to do then right from pre competition to competition to post competition and practice so all this four of what skills do we actually practice and how do we train and into the mental training toughness technique so all so much in that particular course master class um master class is more going deeper where hypnosis imagery is also coming into focus e sports is also there in that 
and uh, again going into more deeper in all of this children adult and muscle, all the age groups we are going deeper individual and team sports we have talked about separately and how we work around them mm-hmm. right and a lot of techniques case studies and everything has been shared in there so doing this courses and if you are a psychologist uh, you don't have to do a full time masters again you can just do this course and apply yourself so uh this particular course is majorly for people who just want to know and learn about sports psychology as well where would they go so they come here a lot of athletes come here coaches come here parents also join in right. this course and know about how can they apply mental training in daily life so we are also talking about how sound and music helps to enhance performance how buddhist perspectives helps to enhance performance so so much so much package it's all applied basically करिकुलम है थोड़ा थियरी तो रहेगा तो अंडरस्टैंड करते हैं बट देन इट्स ऑल एपिक सो दैट्स स्पोर्ट्स साइकोलॉजी एंड नाउ व्हाट्स हैपनिंग इन मंदेहा इज मंदेह एंड रिक्पा कमिंग टुगेदर सो वी हैव ट्रैवल साइकोलॉजी या कंसल्टेंसीज ऑफ ट्रैवल साइकोलॉजी ओवर देयर ट्रैवल टैंजेंट टूल एंड ट्रैवल साइकोलॉजी कोर्स व्हिच वी गोना लॉन्च सून वी हैव ऑलरेडी लॉन्च एंड नाउ लॉन्च एज इन द नेक्स्ट बैच डेट वी गोना लॉन्च सून एंड दिस टाइम every time we have done it online this time we'll be doing it on field in one of the cities so it won't be it would be outskirt of the city it would be some tourist city definitely most probably udaipur right uh, because we are conducting human x summit already over there travel psychology based summit human x uh, where anyone can apply in and uh, we select the best applications who form fit and some of them also get scholarships to join into that human ex program because it's about you it's about the environment and it's about the application then you can create later so that's gonna happen then sports psychology career psychology counseling and psychometrics uh, assessment that's gonna happen so mandeya is gonna be uh, one spot for so many things okay right. yeah thank you mitesh right. sir you have been yes. very helpful in informing the youth <laughs> i just <laughs> i am i am one of the part yeah. of youth i am one part <laughs> of the youth <laughs> yeah i'll pause the recording yeah